Hi, I'm David. Hi, I'm Yelena. And this is our tutorial on Chaturanga Dandasana, four limb staff pose. And if you like this tutorial, please let us know in the comments section. If you want to see other stuff, let us know. We'll do it for you. And make sure to subscribe to us because we're going to have regular uh, stuff coming out all the time. Okay, ready? Yes. All right, we're going to get into it. Most people don't like Chaturanga Dandasana, which is sad. Um, because it's such a transformational posture if you do it well. I mean, I guess it transforms you either way. It's just whether it's a positive transformation or not. So we can make it a positive transformation if we kind of figure out what the work of it is. And it will make you very strong. And um, there's, you know, all sorts of different ways to do postures, of course, yoga postures, many different traditions. But we're specifically talking about Ashtanga Yoga. And Ashtanga has its own conditions and descriptions for each of the postures. So that's what we're going to be looking at right now. Okay? All right. So let's start with the uh, measurements for Chaturanga Dandasana. And we can find the correct distance with plank pose. Now, we don't really do plank pose in Ashtanga, at least not here. Um, but uh, we can use it right now just to figure out where the hands should be and the feet should be. So hands under the shoulders, right, with the arms straight, and the hands are actually just a little bit wider than the shoulders. So Yelena's hands uh, are in line with the outside of her shoulder, and the index finger is pointing forward. So make sure that you're not putting your hands too close together. It's a really common mistake. Yeah. And again, we use the index fingers pointing forward to guide the placement of the hands. You should have the creases of your wrists more or less parallel to the front of the mat and obviously no pain in the wrists, right? That's what we're looking for. Okay, fingers are spread nice and uh, evenly. Don't go crazy with it. And then press the fingertips and the index knuckle of your hand down into the floor. Feet are hip width apart. So the toes should be under the heels. Yep, and the heels are in line with the hip bones. Okay, that's your measurement for the distance between the hands and the feet. Now, when we're lowering down into it, we wanna try to keep the elbows over the wrists so the forearms are vertical and we're going to bring the torso down below the humerus, below the upper arm. Pretty intense, right? Chin forward. So this is going to look a little bit different than some of the postures that you would see in other traditions, some other versions of Chaturanga Dandasana, or maybe uh, cues you've heard. But check out this position here that Yellen is doing now. And then look at this picture here. Okay, that picture is Patabi Joyce. And Patabi Joyce was the uh, teacher of my teacher, Sharat's grandfather. And that picture is like back from 1949 or something. It's him doing Chaturanga Dandasana. Do you see how low the chest is and where the elbows and uh, arms are? So elbows directly over the wrists and then the chest drops lower than the forearms. And this is a really important part of the posture. Now, David and I can come up with a bunch of reasons as to why that is the case. But one of the things that you'll notice right away when you do it is that not only does it make the posture harder, as in your muscles have to work much more, and you have to actually think about how do you engage the whole body and not just dump all the weight into the upper body. And two, you will notice that there's this deep, really nice stretch that happens across the front of your chest as you go that low, meaning you're going through the full range of motions, which is really healthy for the shoulder mobility. We don't want to just be working from the tops of the shoulders. And that'll tend to happen, you know, when the fronts of the shoulders collapse forward. And let's look at two ways that that can happen. So one way is by dropping the head. 
when the head comes down, face down towards the floor, there's a tendency for the front of the shoulder to also drop down. And that's going to get really upper trapezius heavy. You know, you're going to get one of those big thick necks and you'll start to feel tension there. The other way is when the elbow comes behind the wrist. So we want to try to keep the elbow more directly over the wrist with the index knuckle flat on the floor and the chin forward. Okay. Chin goes slightly forward. So now don't, don't go crazy with the chin coming forward so that you're feeling pain in your neck. Obviously it should be a comfortable movement, but extending slightly through the chin is going to also help you to open up the front of the chest and keep the fronts of the shoulders from collapsing forward. Now, if you are building strength and you're just working on this, you have two options. One is you keep the knees on the floor as you go through the range of motion and you lower down. This is a nice way to reduce some of the weight, but still kind of get into the correct pattern and build the habit of going through that movement. And then the second one, and I'll demonstrate them in a second, the second option is for you to actually just fully flop down on your belly. Again, we want to do this so that you go through the full range of motion in your body by coming down to the floor. So what we're saying is to put more of an emphasis on the correct placement of the arms and the chest and the shoulders than to worry about keeping the knees off the floor. If the knees have to come down for you to be able to come low enough into the posture, that's fine. You're still going to be building tons of strength and that's going to let you eventually keep the knees off the floor. Even if you need to come all the way down onto the floor, then that's fine as well because you're developing that range of motion that Yellen is talking about and pushing yourself back up is going to start to build the strength that's going to take you deeper in eventually. Now let's look at some other places where we can avoid the work. So uh, we really want to be careful as well about maintaining a lot of containment in the front of the body. So you'll see this tends to happen often in conjunction with the other sort of misalignments we were talking about where you'll arch the back and your bum sticks up into the air. Okay, so we're going to work against that. We're going to try to hold the front ribs in and then tuck the tailbone and squeeze the glutes here so that you are holding a nice uh, straight line in the hips and the legs and the torso by extending the hips with the glutes. And then Yelena will hold that line as she comes down. Knees can still come down on the floor if she needs to, or she can come right down. But you see, there's that flat line in the back. We also want to keep the legs working nice and strong. So you're going to push back through your heels when you're coming into the posture. And that'll also activate your hamstrings and that'll help you get into that posterior tilt with the hips. So push through the heels, pull in through the belly and tuck your tailbone as you come down. Mwah. Perfect. So if you do this the way that we're describing it, you will get stronger uh, the more you practice. We do what, like 60 something chaturangas in the primary series. So if you do that correctly 60 times each day, six days a week, then you'll see results very fast. And if it's worth anything to you, I am out of breath right now and I can feel my arms because breaking things down and doing them slowly requires a lot of attention, a lot of engagement. So don't get discouraged by it. And if you like what you see and you want to see more, let us know, comment, and of course, subscribe to our channel.